Hello, David Diga Hernandez here, and you are watching Spirit Church on the Encounter TV Network. I want to talk to you about how the fire of God on your life can spread to everyone that you meet. I want to talk to you about the power of contagious faith. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Your mercy surrounds me. Your glory has set me free. Your mercy surrounds me. Your glory has set me free. Your spirit within me revealing the sun to me your spirit all around me I thank you for setting me free you say God with us, Emmanuel, oh, you saved me, you love me, God with God with us, Emmanuel, oh, Whether you realize it or not, your life is impacting those around you. Your faith matters. Living holy matters. Your daily prayer life matters. Everything about you matters. God wants to use your life on a daily basis. God wants to use your life to impact people right here, right now. You may say, my decisions don't really impact anyone. And you might think that your life is insignificant. You might imagine that your decisions don't really have any consequences outside of your own life. But the truth of the matter is this. Every life impacts other lives. That includes your life. And so, the way you live actually counts for eternity. The fact that you haven't quit is going to impact someone. The fact that you haven't given up is going to change someone's life. Sometimes life gets hard. Sometimes things come against us. Sometimes our faith becomes shaken. But if you hold to the truth, if you stand firm, if you hold fast to your confession in Christ Jesus, then God will continue to use your life. Whether you realize it or not, people are watching you. Whether you can see it or not, people observe how you live. And so your faith matters. I wanna show you a very popular portion of scripture, and then I wanna show you something else that you may not have seen. In Mark chapter five, 
We read the story about the woman with the issue of blood. Let's read now Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse number 25. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. I love that. That story always stirs my faith. Here is a woman who had suffered tremendously. The scripture says that she had spent all she had on medical professionals. She sought an answer. She sought a cure. And instead of getting any better, she actually became a lot worse. I imagine and I speculate that she probably was a woman of wealth. After all, it took her all those years to spend all that she had on doctors. Now, despite the fact that she had received no miracle, despite the fact that she had suffered disappointment after disappointment after disappointment, for some reason or another, she said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I can be made completely whole. What faith is this? What unshakable, steadfast faith this woman had to be able to say, I don't know about everything else that happened. I don't care about everything else that happened. All I know is that right here, right now, I'm going to try again. I'm going to seize another opportunity because passing by me is the one I know who can heal me. She saw Jesus. She had heard the stories. I'm sure she saw the crowd gathering around him. And instead of saying to herself, well, I've been disappointed again and again, instead of saying to herself, this is probably just going to be another person who lets me down, she said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. What faith this woman had, what tenacity this woman had. She stood firm in her belief that she was going to receive her miracle. And maybe you're in a season like that. Perhaps you've tried everything to overcome the situation you're facing. Perhaps you've received all of the prayer. You've gone to all of the conferences. You've read all of the books. You've heard all of the prophetic words. You've listened to every sermon. You've studied every teaching, yet something has not broken. You've yet to receive the miracle. You've yet to receive the breakthrough that brings you closer to the Lord. And everything in you is saying, I know that I've suffered disappointment. I know that I've gone through some setbacks. I know that I can't can't see how God is going to do it right now. But something in you is saying, He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Something in you is saying, I know I've suffered disappointment, but if I can just touch the hem of His garment, I know that I'll be made whole. So this woman filled with faith pushes through the crowd. She pushes through the opposition and she seeks out Jesus. She finds him. That's what you need to do. You need to push through the crowd. You need to push through the crowd of doubt, through the crowd of cynicism, through the crowd of bitterness, through the crowd of disappointment. And you need to come to the place where it's just you and Jesus and you can grab hold of him, where you can touch him in faith. That's all you need is one touch and you'll be made completely whole. And so this woman, as a result of her faith, as a result of touching Jesus, was made completely whole. And she felt it instantly in her body. Suddenly all those years of disappointment, suddenly all those years of suffering meant nothing because she had finally received the miracle. My friend, I want to tell you, you may be suffering You may be wondering where the miracle is. You may be wondering where the breakthrough is. You may be wondering when things are finally going to change. 
Now, the scripture tells us that the believer suffers. The scripture tells us that we'll suffer persecution. The scripture tells us that life will not be perfect. But this I do know, that God is a God of miracles. And he makes a way where there seems to be no way. He does the impossible. Just when you think it's over, just when you feel like quitting, just when you think you've had enough, that's when God begins to move. And so that faith rises within her and she is made completely whole. God is about to do that for you. I believe it with all my heart. But then we read a portion of scripture also in the book of Mark in the very next chapter. This is so interesting. Watch this. Mark chapter 6 verse 56 says, Wherever he went, in villages, cities, or the countryside, they brought the sick out to the marketplaces. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. Stop there. Let's look at this again. Let's, let's listen to this again. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe. Now, where did they get that idea? Where did they come? How did they come to this conclusion that if they could just touch the fringe of his robe, they could be made whole? I believe in fact, I think it's plain in Scripture that the people had heard the story of the woman with the issue with blood. They had heard how she received her miracle. Her story of faith, her story of boldness, her story of unwavering belief not only blessed her life, but it inspired many to do as she did. She said within herself, if I can just touch the fringe of his robe, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And once she received her miracle, countless others said within themselves, if I can just touch the fringe of his robe, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, you see, my friend, it's very clear. Faith is contagious. You wonder why the enemy is fighting you so hard. You wonder why you felt like quitting in this season. You wonder why the assault on your mind has been intensifying. You wonder why the opposition has increased. It's because you are on the verge of a miracle just when you think it's over. Just when you've given all that you think you have to give, that's when Jesus shows up. And that's when the miracle happens. An impossible situation is the perfect setting for a miracle. And that's what this woman learned. She discovered that when she came to the end of herself, that's when Jesus shows up. My friend, when you come to the end of yourself, that's when Jesus shows up. Now, it goes beyond that. Because now this miracle that she received sparked something, yes, in her life, but it also sparked something in the lives of those around her. This is why the enemy fights you. Because your miracle, your breakthrough, is not just your miracle. It's not just your breakthrough. Your story of faith, your story of the miraculous, when your testimony is told, others will be impacted. Other lives will be transformed. When people watch you and they see how God moves in your life, they're going to say within themselves, me too. I believe God can do it for me as well. So my encouragement to you, hang in there because your faith is contagious. Don't quit because lives hang in the balance. The consequences are heavy. The responsibility lays with us. We must hold fast to the faith because our breakthrough belongs to others. Our miracle belongs to our family. Our miracle belongs to our loved ones. Our miracle belongs to our friends. You have a story to tell. You have a testimony to share. You have a miracle that will inspire faith in others. Don't quit. I know it seems impossible right now. I know everything is coming against you. 
I know this season has been tough. I know your body is tired and your mind is weary, but he's able. Hold fast because passing by your situation and walking into the city of your pain is the one they call Jesus. And he shows up, as I said, just when we feel we've given all we have. We just have to be persistent. And persistence doesn't even begin until you feel like quitting. Persistence doesn't even begin until you feel like you've given it all. Don't quit. Your faith is contagious and your miracle is coming soon. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to pray for you now. I want to pray that God would stir your faith. I feel the anointing right now as I'm talking to you. I want to pray that God would put a fire deep within you, a fire that will never go out, a fire that will burn bright for all to see, a fire that will spread to your loved ones, a fire that will spread to your ministry, to your church, and to your family. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift those to you now who are receiving this prayer. And I pray under this anointing that you would begin to silence the voice of the enemy. I want you to begin to pray right now in the Holy Ghost. I sense the anointing so strong right now. God is giving you breakthrough. God is going to touch your life. Father, impart faith. Stir their faith, Lord, to hold fast to you. Stir their faith to try again. Stir their faith to persist. I come against every assault of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And I tear down the strongholds of the deception of Satan. And I pray, Father, that you would infuse your, your believers, Lord, your children, your people with power from on high. I thank you, Father, that that anointing is now flowing through my hands, through that camera, and through their screen. And I ask you, Lord, to touch them with your power. In the name of Jesus, somebody with paralysis in their left hand, somebody with paralysis in their left hand has just been healed right now. I can sense this so strong. Somebody with paralysis in their left hand has just been made whole. There's a couple watching me. You're in ministry. I, I sense the anointing so strong. You need to pray right now because the Holy Spirit is moving. There's, there's a couple watching me right now. You're, you're, you're in ministry and you've been struggling to conceive a child. In the name of Jesus, I speak life into that womb. And I pray the resurrection power of God touch your body in the name of Jesus. Keep praying in the Holy Spirit. God's moving right now. Thank you, Lord. I give you the glory for every single miracle that is occurring. There is a healing anointing flowing right now. It's like a river flowing. It's pulsing out. You need to receive it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you're touching. A drug addiction has just been broken. I thank you, Lord, in the name. In fact, you, you were addicted to pain medication. You were addicted to pain medication and you're in ministry. God is breaking that addiction in the name of Jesus. I, I feel like this anointing is touching many of God's servants. Lord, I give you the glory. I thank you. I thank you. Somebody watching me, my goodness, I, I'm just going to be real with you. Somebody with a porn addiction, even as I was praying, they were saying, Lord, break that. Break that spirit of lust you were praying. Break that spirit of lust. That porn addiction is being broken in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your power that's flowing right now. Touch your people, I pray. Heal every sickness and break every bondage. Give them the faith to continue in the name of Jesus. I want you to say it because you believe. Say Amen. My goodness, I feel the anointing so strong right now. It's flowing, guys, and you need to receive it. This is, this is the Holy Spirit's channel, I told you. He takes over whenever He wishes. Wow, that is so strong. I sense it. Lord, thank you for that power. I feel it like um, something pulsing through me right now. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, my friend, this is the real deal. That's what you're sensing on you right now. Thank you, Lord. I give you the glory. Well, I don't even know how to transition from that, but I have to now welcome the new members of Spirit Church. Boy, what a week you've chosen to join. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, now almost 10,000 members strong, it's absolutely free. 
Just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch to sign up. When you sign up, you're going to get a free email from me every single week with a brand new word from heaven and a brand new worship song from Stephen Moctezuma that will come directly to your email. And the best part, you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. Now I want to read your comments. And these comments are actually from last week's video titled Living for God's Glory. Now, last week I talked about the fear of man and the fear of God and how we need to overcome the fear of man if we're going to please God because there are going to be times when man will try to get you to do something that contradicts your convictions and you have to hold to your convictions. So that these are the comments from that teaching, Living for God's Glory. If you haven't seen it yet, you have to go and see it, especially if you're in ministry or desire to be in ministry, you need to watch that video. And by the way, if you'd like me to potentially read your comment on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then leave a comment in the comment section right now, and I may read it next week. While you're at it, don't forget also, if you're watching on YouTube, to subscribe. Click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the content. We got teachings, worship songs, and we show you clips of the power of God moving at our services all around the world. Now to the comments. These are the comments from last week's teaching, Living for God's Glory. Sunday Hurtis writes, I can truly relate. This topic has been one of the things that's been concerning me, especially in the ministry that God has put me into. Thank you for this encouragement. I could not thank the Lord enough for your ministry, Brother David. The Lord bless you, your family, and your ministry always. Florence Ben Poma writes, God bless you, your ministry, and family. Your impact is all over the world. I'm all the way from Ghana. Well, God bless you, Florence, all the way in Ghana. Great TJ writes, the spirit filled are the most misunderstood people on earth. I needed to hear this. Thank you, Pastor David. I want to say thank you very much. You are so committed to feeding us with the word weekly. God bless and strengthen you, sir. You are a shepherd indeed. Well, TJ, all glory belongs to Jesus. We thank him for his ministry. Evelyn Peters, the final commenter, writes, I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit introduced me to this channel. Oh, what a blessing to hear this undiluted word of God. Thanks so much, Pastor David. May the Lord continue to bless and keep you. Well, thank you, Evelyn. I do want to acknowledge that this is the Holy Spirit's channel. It's not mine. He can do whatever he wants with it. If next week he wants me to do something completely different, we're going to do exactly what he says. It's his channel. God gave me a very clear mandate. He wanted me to introduce His Holy Spirit to my generation. And that's one of the drivers for our ministry. There are several drivers, but it comes down to these two things. Our ministry wants to win souls and build believers. That's win souls through evangelism and build believers through discipleship. That's programs like these, teachings like these. And I need your help to keep it going. Don't turn off the video. Maybe you've never watched this far before. I want to talk to you for a second. It's not by accident that you've watched all the way up until this point. I want to talk to you. Our ministry has a mission, and we are executing that mission, I believe, with excellence. We are stewarding well what God has given to us. We want to see believers raised. We want to multiply the impact by investing in other believers and seeing them become evangelists and pastors and prophets and teachers and apostles. That's what this is all about. We spread the word freely that people might receive, that they might become spiritual leaders so that they can go and do what God has called them to do. So our ministry, like I said, has two streams. We build the believer and we win the lost. And we do both of these things through two simple means, events and media. The media that we put out, we put out for free but it costs money to produce. The events that we host, we put out for free. We don't charge registration. Look, you're gonna be hard pressed to find any major Christian event around today that doesn't charge a registration fee. I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong. I understand they have expenses to pay. The problem I have with that is this. If somebody can't afford the registration, they can't come to the event. So instead of putting the pressure on the people to believe, we take the pressure on ourselves and we trust in God. So we put these events on for free. We release the media for free. We don't charge for the videos. We don't charge for the events. Freely you have received, now freely give. We rely as a ministry on free will offerings. Our events, one event, can cost anywhere from ten dollars to fifteen dollars to $20,000 for one night. 
because of all the things that take place at the event, because of the venues we have to get. There's so much that goes into it, you wouldn't believe it. The media takes tens of thousands of dollars to produce every single month because you have to pay a crew, you have to pay editing. There's so much that needs to be taken care of and we want to keep all of this for free, which is why we take free will offerings. This is where you come in. If you've been blessed by this ministry and you say, David, I wanna stand with you. I wanna stand with you and Steve. I wanna stand with you, Steve, and the ministry team. And I wanna help you take the gospel all around the world. This world needs the gospel the true gospel, the message of salvation, repentance from sin, the blood of Jesus. If you're tired of seeing the darkness overtake our world, you don't have to sit back and just watch. You can do something. You can get involved. You can make a difference. You can make an impact. You can change the world. And this is how you do it, through the spreading of the word of God. Help us do that. Become a contributor today. I see a day when we're going to be filling stadiums. I see a day when we're reaching millions more through television. In fact, as I stand here, I'm feeling a little sentimental right now because this is the last video we will shoot. This is the last time we will be on set here at this set. In a few weeks, we're gonna begin shooting on the brand new set at the brand new studio of Encounter TV. And I know you're gonna absolutely love it. And we're gonna see many, many more lives impacted because of it. So here's where you come in. Become a supporter today on a monthly basis. Sign up to be my partner for $30 or more a month, and I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible, or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. That'll be my initiation gift to you. I'll sign it, and I'll send it to you. It'll be my gift, my way of saying thank you for partnering with me. You can choose any one of those books. Now, maybe you can't become a monthly partner. Maybe you don't know how your income is going to be over the next few months. You can give a one-time gift to the ministry as well. There are people watching who can give a gift of 100. There are people watching who can give a gift of 500. There are people watching who could do 1,000. I know there are businessmen and women who can do six figures. Why? Because people have done it for our ministry before. And I can tell you this. You'll, you'll, you'll have a very difficult time finding a better way to invest your money. There's no cause greater than the gospel, and that's what we're all about. We want to see souls won. So... Become my partner today for $30 or more a month or send in a one-time gift to the ministry and say to yourself, you know what? I want to do something generous. I want to challenge you to sow something into this ministry that you've never sowed into a ministry before. Now, I believe God will bless you. That's all wonderful. But here's the main thing. When you do that, you're going to help us spread the word of God. For every dollar this ministry spends, about 50 people hear the word of God. And that to us is a great impact. Do that today. Don't wait on that. Don't, don't delay. Don't say someone else will do it or I'll do it some other time. Do it right now. Help our ministry spread the gospel. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church on the Encounter TV network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.